Oh, there's B Mac Mavericks uh, Adventures first stop. We're in for an adventure today, guys. Should be a fun one. Never see the light. We're green. We're good. Too cold for this. I didn't realize there's parking over here. Guys, we got buried in snow. I don't know if you guys follow the news for Utah, but we got a foot in Salt Lake and probably two feet where Matt lives. And today's kind of the first day where the snow plows have had a chance to go through and break free um, and clear out most of the roads. But that means there's just piles of snow everywhere. It's hard to park, but we're at Eagle Eye. You guys know this is where we ship all our stuff. We're actually for once having a full team meeting with everybody included, even, uh, Bush North, Logan and Casey are on their way down in these conditions and we're gonna design some new apparel and um, start game planning some new products and like uh, merch drops for this whole calendar year. Brian's taking the lead on really trying to map out the full season and that way we can get ahead of schedule because we're usually spontaneous in the last second, but no longer. So let's go inside and check it out. Yeah, that'll be fun. Maybe we should wait for the guys to share some stuff. We often get surprise gift items, um, graduation announcements. That's a good and one. probably number one is wedding invitations. Wedding invitations. Which we haven't crashed a wedding yet. <laughs> but it might be fun. I said we do it. Just go full Vince Vaughn mode. <laughs> one of it's, the greatest movies ever. It is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> That one and the river that runs through it and Step Brothers are kind of the top three that always oh, come to mind if I think of like, solid area. do you want to watch a movie? I watched Old School uh, this past weekend. Also a great one. Will Ferrell. What's his... Uh... We're going streaking. <laughs> so that one... I, like, Everybody's I doing that. it. He looks back there's nobody there. <laughs> What's his character name in that one? I don't know, but he's getting Frank old. Frank the I Tank, saw, dude. I saw him in like an automobile it's commercial. Frank. Oh yeah, insurance Will's... or something, and he was a driver. And all yeah, like, it was, he was a Super Bowl commercial. It's fun. Will Ferrell, man, those guys are so classic. Just so many good, good comedies back in the day. I know what else I watched. The gold, the treasure hunt of Victoria Peak in New Mexico. My friend no was telling me about what it. Yeah, that's about. what a buzzkill that just yeah. was. No way, dude. There's gold in the mountain. Treasure hunter. We're going from classic comedies here. Absolutely, some of the best ever, and well, he the, goes treasure hunt mode. Well, you went, you switched the topic to what you watched recently, oh, and God, that's what I watched. Nice recently. Good segue. There you go. It does give it like this look of like quality. Yeah. It's like a silicone. Sign, kind of sign of my name. Multiple, multiple times. Golf too. Like you might get this if you're lucky. Can, like, look at, look at, I'm gonna draw you a camera on this one. If you're watching this and you get this one, it's the only one I'm going to do it to. Then it's your lucky day and happy birthday. It's probably your birthday too. No. Oh, you're just saying. But like the melon, have you seen them more? This is uh, technically what we would call a product development meeting, uh, which sadly enough, we haven't had many of these, usually very unorganized, but a couple examples. So these are, these are more customized products we've developed. You've seen these probably by now. This is our Tundra hoodie. The one Braden's wearing is the duck brown hoodie. And then these are our new tech hoodies um, that we're, we just finalized. They're going to be launching in the beginning of April. But basically, any of the stuff we, we do custom, the hats, uh, the foamy hats, any of this stuff kind of starts as an idea right here. And then myself and Chris usually work through uh, various levels of sampling until we get the right fit, the right sizing, the right color pattern. Our objective in anything we've ever produced is that it's really high quality. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we all love it for, for, you know, for starters or whatever. So uh, we're kind of starting to plan out back half of 23 and early 24. What are the next things that we want to create? We do have a few different ideas, I think, in our head that we're going to throw out today's meeting. But if you happen to have any ideas in your head, we'd love to hear it. Because at the end of the day, you guys are uh, 
huge part of supporting this, obviously, massive part, the part, the only part, frankly. <laughs> so is there anything in particular that you have in your mind that you're like, God, I wish they made X and keep it within the sphere of like apparel, you know, we're not getting into the technical hunting gear anytime soon, at least. So yeah, we're open for any suggestions. Yeah, I'd love to hear feedback. If any of you guys have bought or purchased the newer stuff, feedback on that. And then like Brian said, if you have ideas for any style of hat, colorways of hat, like artwork designs, yeah, um, fit, you know, for tees and hoodies, what you guys like, put it in the comment section. I'm curious to see what you guys like. But so far, feedback that we've gotten since like Expo on like the new hoodies and the new foam hats is super good. So, so we just want to keep heading that direction. I'm going to layer, open up the hood of the, the car real quick and give you guys a little insight as to like the behind the scenes. So most of the time there's, there's large manufacturers that make t-shirts, they make hats, they make hoodies. And just about everybody taps into that same pool of like options. So you have limited color skews, you have limited styles and fit options. And you may have seen it, you know, you look around, whether it's the hunting space or anybody who's kind of created their own brand, they're, they're kind of pulling from the same pool, which is great. It's a great place to start. We've done it for a long time, certainly. Mm -hmm. But as we kind of continue to evolve, we want to try to make more unique custom things that are, you know, specific to us. So this hoodie, for example, is different than like, you can't buy it anywhere because we, we made it specifically. We added some uh, different elements to it just to try to make it more comfortable and fit better, frankly, than some of the stuff we've used in the past. And that kind of goes down the road with anything that we're working on designing the objective is getting different colors different styles different fits that maybe aren't available uh to the general yeah. public so that's that's a little behind the scenes look into that we're doing a mail call yeah, mail vlog. A mail. oh what do they call them mail log package drop mail log the one whenever whoever's talking all right so we got we got a, eric talked a little bit earlier occasionally give us some packages for whatever reason we've gotten a lot of wedding invitations in the in the last uh probably two years and uh this one came this is uh robert and terry lynn they're getting married august 25th congratulations super it, cool not during hunting season you get a gold <laughs> star and uh robert's wife wrote a very nice little letter here asking for can we give robert a shout out so robert this is your official shout out. Shout out to Robert. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, too, Robert yeah. and Terry. Congratulations, Terry Lynn. Yeah, you guys are getting married. I'm just impressed. So you would be surprised at how many people send us wedding invitations right in the middle of September and October. What? What are we thinking? Don't mm -hmm. you set Don't long, set yourself up for failure when you're on in life. Anyways, hey, thank you for the support. Thanks for sending the, the nice letter. Maybe we'll try to find a little care package to send your way as a wedding gift. Here's one. It says baby in bloom. Oh, we got a baby announcement now too? Baby shower. We're getting invited to a baby shower. Logan, you're going to the baby going. shower. I'll go. Where's the um, one? It's probably really good at those. This one's in Buckeye, Arizona. This is uh, the baby honoring uh, Cassidy and Anthony. Congrats on the upcoming baby. Looks like it's uh, going to be Saturday, April Fool's Day. Ooh, Eric's birthday. birthday. That's Let's not when go. the baby's getting born. That's, it. That's just the shower. Congratulations to the new little one. So we've got a letter from Boston. Boston? Boston. I can't read the last name. Veter? Yeah, Veter from Penguich Middle School. That's I wonder right if here this in Farmington, is, Utah. Yeah, that's just south of us here. Dear Hush and Crew, hi, my name is Boston. I am in seventh grade and I am doing a project for my college career awareness class, CCA. Wow. And write a letter to someone that does does my dream job relates to yours because I want a career in hunting. Even though I have been able to hunt for only two years, I have really enjoyed it. I also love watching your videos when I am not hunting. I would love to hear back from you. I would love to hear back from you a little bit about your background and why you started to pursue this as a career, if possible. So, Man, now, first and foremost, seventh grade, already talking about college plans and careers. I'm impressed. Yeah. Great school impressive. that they're going to to get kids involved that early. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Let's just talk about it right yeah, here. Let's do it real quick. So, I started filming hunts when I was like your age. And I packed around a camera for years and years just documenting 
picking up antlers and video taping wildlife and then just sharing it with anybody I could. And I knew I loved it. And I knew that one day I would want to make a living somehow doing it, but just didn't know how. And that's kind of led me to meeting these guys. Yeah. My background is pretty much about that age. I started, me and my buddy started filming each other snowboarding back then. I hate to date ourselves, but I'm going to, it was a lot harder last back then you'd have to carry around an actual VHS camera if you don't know what that is, there was things back in the day called VHS tapes that were like this big. Anyway, it would record all that footage onto that VHS tape. And me and my buddies would film each other uh, snowboarding in hopes to send these videos out, edit them, send them out to sponsors and to hopefully get a sponsorship. Um, that leads us to now where, you know, technology has changed. It's a lot easier to film. You can film on your phone, really better quality too. And yeah, that's kind of how my start got into uh, filming myself. Yeah, we started, uh, boy, I think this is year number eight working together. So kind of the uh, same kind of a deal. Had a dream just like you did. Mm -hmm. Always wanted to do something in the outdoor space. Didn't quite know how to get there, uh, but eventually was introduced to these guys and it kind of all came together. So keep chasing your passion. Never too early to start kind of identifying what you might want to do in life. And uh, you, got a, you got a lot of... A lot of time to figure it out, certainly. And just uh, if you want to start filming stuff, no better time than now. Use whatever camera that you can get your hands on and just uh, immerse yourself into what it's like to film your adventures outside. That's the starting point. I will tell you this, Boston. I think you're light years ahead of where we were when mm -hmm. we were in seventh grade. You actually <laughs> yeah. identified what you want to do and how to do it. Um, like Brian said, man, get, get to work and it's never too early. Start filming yourself now and uh, see what you can make of it. But yeah, just do it for fun. And, uh, and uh, hopefully maybe it can prepare into a, a career, but do it for fun and out of passion. And never stop. Don't stop. Thanks We've for always said this thing doesn't stop until the day we do. Come along, guys. Check it out. So hungry. We're making fridges now. It's the first one we made. It's the Hush Fridge. Look at this retro sticker. It's everything you did. Old eat. school. Guys, this is behind the scenes at our fulfillment area. You guys have been here before. We're just gonna grab some stuff for a photo shoot today of our new products. We're gonna pick stuff up. I snagged one of these just because I need one. It's my favorite shirt we've ever made. Writing that stuff down for Caitlin. Got it. One thing. Um, arrow veins. We need these. What was I gonna do this year? Go red with your. Yeah, I'm gonna this go. Is Caitlin. She runs the ship. <laughs> red. We'll focus on sun shirts, red, and the new hoodies. Um, so bow hunter's a new one. The green and orange one's a new one. I got the five arrow one on. What's your, what's your favorite t-shirt of all time? It's right here, you guys. It's a mule deer 50-50. I actually designed this too. Love this shirt. Yeah. If you guys don't have one, go get one right now. GetOcean.com. Shop it. I'm going to take some pictures in this thing today. Like you're really close. <laughs> Are we close? Guys, one of my favorite new shirts is this elk cartridge. We don't have one open. But basically a bunch of popular rifle car cartridges with an elk and a mountain scene. Super, super rad shirt. Love that design. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. I'm wearing it right now. Dude, sick. <laughs> I'm wearing a tan one, the shit pack out one. Nice. It's not there. This was also. Dude, low key, we've only made one white shirt. Love it. This is one of my favorite shirts ever. It's my 4th of July parade shirt. I wear it almost like all the time. But it is a good 4th of July parade shirt. It is. All right, guys. Fun little fact: I made some fajitas yesterday. Fajitas, <laughs> fajitas. That and was a uh, fun fact. I used the fish and fowl tequila lime. This was baller on the fajitas. So I just sliced up some flank steak, really thin. Threw that seasoning on there. Mm. My favorite, I would say, is where are we at here. Go this one. Garlic butter herb. Yeah, with this one right here. You go perfect blend with garlic butter herb on anything beef or like elk, red meat, dark red meat. These two mixed, 
it's, you can't go wrong. Perfect blend literally is like the perfect blend. This is kind of like our GSP, like garlic, salt, pepper. It's got some paprika in it and it's a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit sweet. So money on all red meats, but paired with the garlic herb butter. You guys, this is a match made in heaven. What do you got there, bud? I just found a shed. Whoa. It's the rutting grounds. Look it's a unicorn, the time. dude. Um, we just got some uh, some of the new new. We're gonna do a lot of a lot more archery stuff this year too. So, well, me and Matt will be making some videos up with Fletch and Arrows. We got the new hats. Um, the other guys are talking with our new cameraman right now. Then we're gonna go get lunch and head to the Easton Center, shoot some bows, get some uh, footage and photos, and that's that's the plan really. That's what we're doing. Come along. Folks at home, folks at home, listen up. Look at what we're doing. We are sitting in a parking lot, the whole crew in three different trucks. But what we want to do right now is uh, we got to give something away. If you guys have watched long enough, you know we like to give stuff away. Well, we started a, a conservation project here a few years ago with our good buddies at First Light. And what we do is we go out and we plant uh, sagebrush and bitter brush in some very important wintering ranges for the elk and deer. Anyway, well, that requires us to raise money in different ways. And as you guys know, hopefully you guys do know, that we work with some of the absolute best partners in the business. So our good buddies at Mountain Ops decided they wanted to help out, kick in, and give away a buffalo hunt. All the money raised from that buffalo hunt is now going to go towards our Brush for Bucks conservation project. We just got the name of the winner, and we're about to call them up and give this buffalo hunt away. All right guys, so I have the name of the lucky winner typed in my phone. It looks like they're Apple friendly because it does offer a FaceTime button. This could be you. Who knows? Let's hit FaceTime and see if they answer. FaceTime is not normal for us. We typically give them a, a ring, maybe even a text message, but we're gonna try a FaceTime. They look Apple friendly, so let's see if they answer. I'm feeling like it's gonna be a unavailable. Hmm. Hmm. Might have to just try giving them a phone call. Let's try that. Maybe a text message. Yeah, let's try try the phone call. Did, was that unavailable or iced? I think iced. It seemed short. It did didn't it? <laughs> let's let's try a call. It's 5 p.m. People are getting off work. You think maybe they'd answer, but you know, from an unknown number, you never know what to expect. Uh-oh. Iced. 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 I definitely was getting iced. Sent a text. Hey, can you please answer? It's very important. I mean, that's some pretty good news. Who wouldn't want to get a phone call that they want to bison hunt? <laughs> Let's see if we get anything out of that. Nothing in response yet. Still waiting. Okay, is, uh, is the third time the charm? We left a text message, so hopefully that. Leave a message. Wow. Getting iced, guys. Getting iced. Threatener. <laughs> if you don't answer, you know when the buffalo hunt. <laughs> you have two minutes to respond. Casey, what are your thoughts? Getting iced. I think we should make it from here on out, make it a rule. If you don't answer the first time, we move on. No. <laughs> keep these people on edge uh i'm the same way when i get a call from somebody i don't know hang up immediately and then when the few <laughs> times i do answer i've never been given a buffalo hunt yeah maybe i just need to answer more hey this is a lesson for everybody don't screen your calls answer person on the other end might just want to be doing a good thing for you like renewing your car insurance that's a good thing keep it rolling all right we got a response so bmac he knows what's up he says use the person's first name in a text. And I did, and soon enough, who is this? Right back. Nice, we made progress. We're making progress. We got a reply on a text. She says, who is this? Say, trust me, you'll, you'll wanna know. <laughs> Imagine getting that text, right? you know? You gotta be like, who is this? Like, it's kinda creepy. Yeah, like this person's tried to FaceTime me twice yeah. and text me. Now they know my name. I'm blocking you. 
She said that? Yeah. <laughs> call her again. <laughs> this is gonna be- Wait, let me call her from my phone. <laughs> Should I try from my phone? No, she's gonna be like, what the heck? <laughs> that is kind of weird, right? I'm gonna try a FaceTime. Trust me, you'll wanna know. <laughs> Denied? Iced. I just said, this is a very good call, I promise. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be okay. enough. Straight to, I'm blocking you. <laughs> wow. So aggressive. so aggressive. I mean, hitting someone with a FaceTime the first time is kind of odd, you know, but yeah. that would have been fun. I would answer, I feel like. At this point, you'd be like, what's worst case scenario I could answer and then, then block. This is going down the same road as the last one we just did. Right? Where they're just like, so didn't believe it. Finally gave in. I just want a chance to like redeem myself now, you know, like, hey, you know, it's cold out here. We're just trying to get a hold of you real quick <laughs> to let you know. Do you want a bison hunt? Like, I have a feeling she's icing me good. Do you think you're done? Do you think your number's blocked? I mean, no response on the text. Eric, what if you text them this picture? Yeah, that's, that's a dead giveaway. Now she's got to be like... But still confused, like what? A little confused because it's like, where did I fill that out? We sent a picture of the raffle ticket, hoping that they'll connect the dots and at least understand that we have her information for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, you gave us your number. If I called... If you called and it went straight to voicemail... I'm pretty sure. No, I think if you're blocked, it just, it's, her phone ignores it. So you think you're not, but you can just, it won't give you a voicemail or anything. We have to pivot to a new phone. I think we better pivot. Wow. We're going to have BMAC take over. And... This is the most difficult winter announcement we've ever done. We've given a lot of things away. It's like music. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. We're good. Oh, we're good. We're good. Logan, over here. Go back, go back. Hurry. Holy cow. Kim. Hello? Is this Kim Ward? It is. My goodness, you're hard to get a hold of. I'm sorry. I thought you blocked me. I was going to. I know. I, I a lot of weird calls. Have you, have, have you seen an increase in weird calls lately? Yeah. I think we all have. Well, do you know why I'm calling? I don't. Okay. Do you have any clue who this is? I don't. All right. Well, my name is Eric. I'm with my buddy Casey and my buddy Brian, also known as BMAC. Oh, hey Eric, how are you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> Preston would know who your phone number was. Is he there? Yeah. Put it, put it, are, are we on speaker? Um, I'll put you on speaker, hold on. Yeah. Hey Preston, I couldn't find your number, so I called Kim. <laughs> What's up? How are you? She gave it to me at the Hunt Expo. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, pretty weird, right? So, did you guys? Was she there on your bison hunt? Oh, uh, she was. Yeah. Does she have any interest in hunting a bison herself? Uh, yeah, she does. <laughs> well, hey man, she we're. Really, she really does. We are. Oh, that's, that's, the one, that's the one. That's the one animal. Got. Yeah. Well, before he got his um, hunt, before he drew that limited whatever he got. Anyway, I said, if I ever hunted one animal, it'd probably be a bison. It probably. And I'm like, you sucker. Like, because I didn't grow up hunting. Like, I'm not. Anyway. I see. All right. Well. We have good news and we're just the middlemen here on this. You guys entered a raffle at the Mountain Ops booth for a bison hunt. We're the lucky people to communicate with the winner, who is Kim, that you won the buffalo yeah. hunt. That is my <laughs> I, I, I have never killed anything besides a duck. <laughs> ah, so this will be your first big game hunt. Holy smokes. Yeah, for real. Well, hey, it's pretty wild, but uh, I got BMAC here. He's going to explain to you guys what's included in the hunt. And uh, again, just want to say thanks for all the support across, you know, Mountain Ops and Hush and the Brush for Bucks 
initiative. So I'm going to pass this over to BMAC, but want to say congratulations first and foremost. And uh, I'm going to let BMAC tell you guys what you want. It's pretty sweet. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, Kim. Not as good as you. So, your your lucky uh, raffle ticket, you get a four day, three night bison hunt in northern New Mexico on the Vermejo Park Ranch. It's an all expenses paid hunt. You also are going to win a Weatherby rifle, a Vortex scope, and a first light kit. So you're pretty much dialed. What's this? That night? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. They had, no they had entrance uh, at their booth, and then yes, also at the concert. Again, all the proceeds raised from this raffle and the concert that night are going 100% to our Brush for Bucks Habitat project. Where this year we're going to plant 30,000 uh, seedlings here in April. So, congrats. And we're coming to help with that. You better, you better freaking come and help with it. Well, that's why that's how Preston talked me into buying these raffle tickets. There you go. Well, you guys, you guys, you're the grand prize winner. Well, I am shocked. Really, I am. Like, I really never won anything, and then I won that scooter at that concert, and I was like, good, finally. Lucky, oh, lucky, Preston. lucky. I'm so shocked. Preston, oh, uh, you you better ask her to put in for all your hunts for you because she's on a roll. I am seriously asking her to do that. Is that well, I better take a hunter safety course, huh? <laughs> better get busy. All right, guys. Well, there you go. Uh, Kim is the lucky winner of the bison hunt that Mountain Ops donated to our uh, conservation initiative, Brush for Bucks. We can't thank those guys enough or any of our other sponsors ever helped us raise money for good causes. We're going to announce our 2023 Brush for Bucks event here shortly, so stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my portion of the vlog. This week, we're with Brayden, and we're going to go feed some deer. Brayden's been doing this for a couple months now, and I'm sliding in my own driveway. Brayden's been doing this for a couple months now, helping the deer herd out up here, and we did a little special earlier, a week or two ago, where we went over with our friends at RNK and helped feed the deer on private property there. So now we are headed, well actually, first, before we go get the feed for the deer, Brayden, show them what's in the back seat. We've got some Yeti Go Boxes. So these are a new product from Yeti. We're excited to give you guys a rundown on them. We are gonna go get some photos of these things. It's a perfect overcasty day, no harsh lights. So we're gonna go get some creative photos of these things. And we thought it might be fun to give you guys a little behind the scenes look. So Brayden will be filming behind the scenes and I'll be shooting some photos. And uh, yeah, let's go get creative. Uh, the DNR has fed deer in this area for about a month, month and a half, I think, because the winter has been so bad. We have record snowpack upwards of 200%. We just got here to the ranger station and we are going to load up some feed pellets and then we're gonna head out and do the Braden's daily chore. So let's go get this done. Like Matt said, we're just up here feeding. I've been doing this for a few months now, just trying to help out the deer around here, and looks like they're hungry today. They're literally 20 yards from us, just trying to chase us down, and they do this every day. And I wish we'd be able to feed them more feed, but we can only get like six bags as of right now. So let's go feed them, and hopefully it helps them, helps their hunger a little bit.
Well, there's a new dead fawn from yesterday. Looks like it died a few hours ago. It's still pretty soft, which is sad. I saw him yesterday. Didn't look healthy. It looks like it got scratched by something. I'm not sure what, if it was a coyote messing with it or something, but it has a huge mark on its back and it died within a few hours. Like I said, just super soft still. Just right up there. It's pretty sad just seeing all these deer just live with the dead ones too because they don't they all don't survive like helping them feed a little bit it helps a little bit i'm honestly happy they kind of did the shed closure because it, it at least keeps the shed hunters out of hiking around and yeah there's still people hiking around but it does help a lot so now we're just gonna feed this one last bag and just kind of look at them they're fighting each other just to try to survive and it's pretty sad watching honestly but i guess it's just survival of the fittest because it's just how it is right now just trying to survive as you can see, there's a lot of deer that rely on uh, this feed. It's pretty cool for the state to step in and pay for this feed. But something that I did not know, and I don't think Braden knew either, was uh, there's requirements that have to happen on the winter range before the state can step in and feed. Like, I think there has to be 22 inches of snow on the south-facing slope. It has to stay below 32 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time, I think 14 days. And if it gets above 32 degrees out of those 14 days, it like resets and then has to have a certain number of deer on the winter range. Uh, I think there's two or three other requirements, but it has to hit like three requirements in a row before the state can step in and feed. I'm trying to talk quiet because these deer are coming back in and we're just picking up our trash and getting out of here but I just wanted to uh kind of show you guys what Braden and what the biologists and some other volunteers have been doing here uh in my local area but it's pretty cool to see um kind of sportsmen put their money where their mouth is and uh super appreciative I know these deer are appreciative but um yeah we're gonna head up and get some photos of those yeti go boxes that we showed you guys and uh give you a little behind the scenes look at creating some content, but just uh, helping Braden out with his daily chores today. Kind of wild. All right guys, so Braden is placing the product. I'm shooting the product. And uh, we're both listening for cars. We're on a straightaway on a highway that's not very popular, so. Dude, that's such an epic shot. Get all the angles. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed Brayden and I's portion of the vlog. Uh, it was a little bit different today. We got some sweet photos. I'll insert a couple of those right here. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. There's a little look at what we did today. Um, the lighting was perfect, like I said. Anytime you can get a nice overcast, um, nothing too blown out, but still, there's still some sun coming through to bring up some of the shadows. And we weren't really shooting straight front lit or back lit. We kind of have... Um, the luxury of the sun kind of being off to the side so it adds some depth to the photo So I hope you guys enjoyed that little behind the scenes look and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Feeding the deer a little bit. We are still trying to wrangle up the biologist around our area To film another video. Um, we've been playing phone tag So hopefully we can get with him sooner than later, but until then we will see you guys next Wednesday. Peace